This video is about estimation strategies. Um, this is not an, one of the learning goals that you're going to need to know at the end, but we will return again and again to estimation strategies. Um, we want to be able to round, we want to be able to use front end estimation, and we want to be able to use compatible numbers to estimate, and we need to know what are the appropriate situations to do that in. Rounding is the first estimation strategy that we're going to talk about today, and it's a good all-purpose estimation strategy. If you don't learn any other ones, rounding is the way to go. Rounding basically means that we're going to take a number and we're going to remove some of the detail from that number. So we're going to take some of the place values and make them zero. If we take the number 1,347 and we decide that that number is too complicated for some reason and we want to round it to the hundreds place, that would be the three, we are going to um, try and figure out what 100 is that 1,347 closest to. So if we look at a number line, you can see that 1,347 would be placed on the number line between 1,300 and 1,400. The number 1,350 is exactly in between 1,300 and 1,400, exactly in the middle. And 1,347 would be a little to the left of that. So now we just have to decide of those two hundreds that 1,347 is in between, 1,300 and 1,400, which one is 1,347 closer to? And we can see that since it's a little to the left of the 1,350, that it is in fact closer to the 1,300. And so that would be the value that we would round to. Um, you can see because we have zeros in the tens place and the ones place, we've lost that detail. The four and the seven details are now gone, and we have a simpler number, but we have lost some of the information that we had in the original number. We could take out even more of the detail in that number. If we want to make it even simpler, we could round it to the thousands place, the one, and um, we would look at that three in the hundreds place to help us decide which way to round that number. Um, we could also, again, look at a number line and decide well, where on that number line would this number fall. Now this time we're numbering by thousands because we're rounding to the nearest thousand. And you can see, again, 1,347 is going to be in between 1,000 and 2,000 and it's to the left of the middle number, 1,500, so we would round to 1,000, meaning now we've lost all the detail of the three, the four, and the seven, making it an even simpler number, just 1,000. As a second example, if we took the number 25 and rounded it to the tens place, we could count by tens on our number line, and you can see that 25 would fall exactly in the middle of 20 and 30. So we would have a choice of rounding it either down to 20 or up to 30. Um, traditionally, it would be rounded to 30. However, you do have a choice. Um, if you have a lot of numbers that you're going to be rounding and they are all falling directly in the middle, of two digits that you could round it to, it's a good idea to round about half of them up and about half of them down. Um, you'll have less rounding error if you do that. There's a general rule that if the digit to the right of the digit that you're rounding to is between 0 and 4, you round down, and between 5 and 9, you round up. So for example, if you have the number 356 and you want to round that to the tens place, um, that would be the number 5. We would look at that 6, and since it's between 5 and 9, we would round that number up to 360. If you have the number 432 and we want to round that to the hundreds place, we would look at the digit directly to the right of that, the 3, and that 3 is in between 0 and 4, and so that tells us to round the number down to 400. If we had the number 1,999 and we wanted to round that to the hundreds place, we would look at the 9 that's directly to the right of it, and because that's between 5 and 9, we would round up. Now that one is a little bit trickier, because when you add a 1 to the 9 in the hundreds place, that causes you to carry a 1 over to the thousands place and makes it 2,000, because you can't have a 10 in the hundreds place, so it becomes 2,000. This would be a good time to pause the video 
and note these examples and the rule about rounding in your notes. The second estimation strategy that I'm going to talk about is front end estimation. And this is usually useful when you're going to be finding the sum of several numbers, meaning that you're going to be adding together more than two numbers. If that's the case, then this would be a good strategy to use. So let's say we have the example that we are at the grocery store and we're going to be buying three things. Uh, the first thing we're going to buy costs $1.74. The second thing we've decided to purchase costs $2.37. And then the last thing that we throw into our cart costs $5.99. And we want to estimate the cost of these three items. And so we're going to look at the front numbers. That's why this is called front end estimation. The one, the two, and the five. And we are going to add those three numbers together. And that gives us a total of eight. Now we're going to look at all the numbers on the back of the number, everything we haven't looked at so far. And we're going to say, well, up about how much does that add up to? I can look at that and say that 74 cents plus 37 cents is about a dollar. And then on my last number, the 99 cents is also about a dollar. So now I'm going to add together the eight, the one, and the other one. And so I have an estimated cost for my shopping trip of about $10. Again, you might want to pause the video here. That's really all there is to front end estimation. If you'd like another example, you can check your textbook. The final type of estimation that I'm going to talk about is using compatible numbers. And this is used mainly in division, but um, you can also use it anytime. It's just a strategy that you pick numbers that are nice to work with, even if they aren't necessarily the numbers that you would round to. Let's suppose that my son has actually managed to save up $65.76. That would never actually happen. He wants to know how many Lego Hero Factory kits he can buy. They each cost $12.94. This number is burned into my brain. Now, normally we would round $65.76 to 66, and we would round $12.94 to 13. But 66 doesn't divide evenly by 13. So it would be better if I used nicer numbers. So I'm going to say, OK, well, $65.76, that's pretty close to 60. And $12.94, that's pretty close to 12. Those numbers do divide evenly. So I'm going to use them. 60 divided by 12 is 5. So I know that my son can buy about five Lego Hero Factory kits if he saves up that much money, which again, is never going to happen. As a final example of using compatible numbers when dividing, um, if I'm doing some sort of craft project that requires 6.5 inches of wire, and I have a spool of wire that contains 50 inches of wire, normally, I would round the 6.5 either down to 6 or up to 7, traditionally up to 7. But in this case, again, 50 doesn't divide evenly by 7. But I noticed that 6.5 could be rounded down to 6. And then if I change the 50 inches, to 48 inches, which I definitely wouldn't do if I was rounding, then I have a division problem that's nice and easy. 48 divided by 6 is 8. And so I can make about 8 of these projects that require the wire. Each video is going to end with a couple of questions. This is your free response question. Please ignore the number 2 and pause the video and then answer this question in the form to the right of this video. 
This is the multiple choice question, so again, you should pause the video and then just make sure that your form is completely filled out and that you hit the submit button at the end. If you have any feedback for me, just let me know. This is just my first try, so I'm sorry if it's terrible.